So I get a lot of questions, especially when I start working with like a client or uh, something like that about how I started working with the Akashic Records and some of my just experience and perspective on the topic in general. So I thought I might as well just make a video uh, discussing that a little bit. So uh, originally I have a background in more witchy realms, um, herbal herbalism, uh, divination, um, connecting with land and some, some light uh, mediumship uh, experiences and that kind of thing. Um, and that was back in like 2011 when that started. A uh, preacher's kid went to school for uh, psychology, worked in mental health, all that good stuff. And then um, a few years ago, in very early 2020, um, I, while I was working in the mental health uh, community, I started uh, meditating more often. And there was this one specific day where I sat down to meditate and um it's i was just intuitively drawn to this very uh complex setup meditating with like candles going and uh grid work around where i was meditating and it was just a very intense uh, setup that I, um, it was not something that I normally did. I would just, just go and sit and start meditating, maybe put some music on. So anyways, while I was meditating this day, I end up in the astrals. This is the first time I'd ever consciously gone up to the astrals. Um, now it's kind of almost an everyday occurrence. But um, yeah, I end up going up into the astrals and throughout this journey, um, find myself at this glowing door um, where I come across a spirit team member. Um, one of my main spirit guides that I work with very closely, um, who at the time appeared as a very large glowing white barn owl. And they basically congratulate me for like making my way there, gave me this really big hug. And they basically like, uh, you need to, um, you can't enter right now. You need to come back when you understand what you have found. Um, and But they were like, congratulations. We're so excited you found us um, here, you know, and they sent me back. And then I kind of popped back into my body and present moment. What It was like the most, single most profound spiritual experience I had had up to that point. And so it sparks this whole adventure of trying to figure out what I had found. And there's some other symbolism and some other things that came up. And so I kept looking up keywords and symbols and because I, I had this very distinct sensation that there was a, there was something specific that I had found, not just the astral, not just astral travels. There was a specific like place or when that I had stumbled upon. And I eventually end up finding this image that in Google image search that had all of these different symbols that I had come across in the travel. And I go and click on the image and it takes me to this website talking about the concept of the Akashic Records. Um, up to this point, I had never heard of that. I was very much more into, you know, psychology, mental health, um, more traditional eclectic witchcraft, um, like connecting with like my Celtic lineage, Appalachian folk magic, um, working with herbs, tarot, divination, that kind of thing. Um, had never really be heard about the Akashic Records anything intergalactic or any of that kind of stuff. And so I was just like, oh, what is this? 
classic records but as soon as i started reading it i just had these chills running up and down my spine which now was like a sign from my spirit team that i've kind of like um approved with them i guess you could say uh for like confirmations of things so i had these like really dramatic like chills and like these like just the hair was standing up on my arms and i was just like i don't know what this is but this is it this is what i had found so i started to poking around doing a little bit of research and I always joke with my uh one of my close friends that I swear it was like my spirit team had like blocked the concept of the Akashic Records off the internet um nowadays you know it's all over um you can find it fairly easily but it was like I would find something and but it was like I could never get too far. I would only be able to kind of get like the gist about it. I would find a video or like a book or some or somebody talking about it. And it was like, I could never like stick my attention to it too long, even though I was very confident that that's what I had found. So long story short, over the course of like months, um, it becomes this thing that um they wouldn't let me take like a class on the akashic records they wouldn't let me like i would try to read books i would download them on my like phone or whatever um like apple books or whatever and like the most popular ones or whatever and i would try to start reading them and i would just like i could not get myself to read them. And so they were like constantly putting these blocks up. So finally, I end up taking this little um, class um, about channeling. And I kind of, I almost felt bad in the class because it was like, as soon as like they started giving a few techniques and ideas, it was like everything started like clicking. And all of a sudden I was like channeling these like, like paragraphs and like stories and seeing all this complex information and I, I felt so bad I would go in like with so much excitement share everything and like other people in the class would be like oh well I I just saw like a sun or I just saw like a leaf blowing in the wind or I just heard like this phrase or something like that and so I I kind of I had like some um imposter syndrome like uh stuff going on around that time uh too but and with confidence and everything um where i was like oh, i was like oh, oh maybe i'm not doing this right because uh, maybe i should not be getting this much information but um I, anyways i like started like developing all of a sudden these really like precise and nuanced skills for channeling so i was like okay cool let's put this to use with this akashic record stuff and so I start, um, and like I said, I, I have a witchy background, all that kind of stuff. So very big on energetic protections and shielding and grounding and all that good stuff. So I would like set my environment, set the energy, do all that kind of stuff. And I would um, sit down and I would do this breathing and kind of like hand movement thing that it's developed to something like totally different now so i don't even know that i like fully can remember what i did um and was basically like at the time my intuitive access process for the akashic records and i would just sit down and set the intentions and i would start channeling from my record keeper and i would just set very clear decisive specific intentions that i wanted to channel from my record keeper and so they start talking to me i um, start talking to them i started talking to my spirit guides some that i had some um rapport with prior to separate from the akashic records that could kind of like give me confirmations and clarifiers and like really like I'm very big on like wanting like multiple confirmations and stuff to like ensure what is really like as close to true as possible. And so I start talking to the Akashic Records through channeling, written channeling um, at the time and I'm um, more typed. Um, I figured out real quickly that I could type a lot more and a lot more fluidly typing than um, handwriting and getting hand cramps the whole time. Uh, so yeah so they start talking to me and they're basically just like yeah there's like a reason that we would derail you from any class or 
book or anything that you would try to go into to learn how to access the Akashic Records. Excuse me. <sighs> Energy. <laughs> um, and um, they're just like reiterating that. And um, they were like, there was there was a very specific reason why that kept happening. You were not meant to learn how to connect with the records in that way. And, um, and, and you know, I was working on my master's program for clinical counseling at the time and all this other stuff and very book nerd, research heavy, like intense like that. And so they knew me, they knew how I was, and they knew that if I had found a class or a book or something, I would have taken it very, like, literally as like a formula, like I have to follow this exact formula to connect with the records. And they basically like, you would have been able to do it fine. You would have been good at it. And, you know, it wouldn't have been a problem in that way. But you were meant to kind of develop your own unique approach to connecting with the records so that you could eventually teach it which at the time i was like oh no 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 like uh, uh that seems like way too far in the future for me like um i'm just now barely kind of getting the hang of this but they were like yeah you were you're supposed you 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 have a very unique approach to working with the records and connection to them and techniques for doing it that you were meant to develop develop on your own and if you had learned from some of these other um, methods specifically with the way that i was at that time where i was very much into like i was just very booky and very logic very much in my head very logic centered very much like oh formulaic like oh i have to do x y and z and um yeah, like that. So they knew how I was. So that's really not discrediting other courses or anything at all. Um, but, but yeah, so then like, oh, at that point, I still had relatively limited access. It was very much centered on my personal Akashic records and my um, memories and soul knowledge. And it was um, for a while, it was almost just like talking to a spirit guide that had like a little more developed um knowledge and a very kind of unique way of speaking and so i basically started learning with my record keeper i would basically take classes with them and my spirit guide and so they started teaching me more about how my energy work how my worked um, how my soul body functions, how my psychic perceptions um, um, flow and what they're attuned to and like what is unique and like personal for me for connecting. Um, how they started discussing with me about like um, the Akashic Records kind of lives on a specific, I guess, frequency is the best word to use. Uh, very it's like its own wavelength that's a little different than um, some of my spirit guides or like a ancestor or um, like an entity or something like that like it's a different like wavelength of energy um, so it's kind of like almost learning a new language um, especially compared to like connecting like I I was starting to like get familiar with connecting with like my spirit guides through divination and intuition and stuff like that. So it was like a whole different like frequency of like information and everything. And so yeah, that's really kind of how it started. And over time, um, I started gaining more and more access to um, my Akashic records. Um, so kind of it started out more so just channeling direct information and then along with my record keeper and my spirit guides they started training me to work in the astrals more um so this was um and i ended up being like light body activated and all this kind of stuff where that what really ramped up my capabilities for going into the astral and perception and that kind of thing and so then i started going to it's still kind of within this when kind of thing like where it's kind of just it's just 
So when, a where, a how, all that kind of all at one time and neither at the same time. So, but in the astrals, you can go to what feels like a place of the records. And, you know, you have to be careful because there are some like other places in the astral that kind of at first glance look like stereotypical concepts of the records, like a library or like things like that. So you want to like have a relationship with your record keeper and your spirit guides beforehand to kind of triple confirm where you're at and everything. But um, there is like a concept of like a place. So they would, so I would experiment with like going to like places um, within the Akashic records, within that frequency of like energy. Um, And then other times I would just kind of like download the information through channeling. Um, I'm very, very claircognizant. Uh, relatively clairvoyant, um, but I'm super claircognizant. That's like my predominant um, psychic perception, though I'm able to tap into all of them to varying degrees. Um, uh, So yeah, so over time, like it began developing and it was um, for like a more wear type concept. It was like gaining access to more rooms um where each room kind of had a different theme or like type of information um and now like i couldn't even count the quantity of rooms uh (laughs) that um i'm able to access which is wild and barely scratches the surface of what exists and um yeah so i at this point i teach classes about the akashic records Um, I do mentorship sessions, um, teaching others how to access the Akashic record in their own unique way. Um, I talk about it a lot. It's something that I incorporate into every single client session I do. I don't have a single one that doesn't incorporate the records to some degree, just because it's such a profound um, resource for me. Um, And really, I use the term Akashic records because it's what... It was the first term that I came across that felt right to me, um, that clicked. Um, But really, the term isn't that important. Um, I use the term soul records a lot, uh, the soul memory. Um, I also, you know, technically, um, it falls under the concept of universal consciousness memory that works there's like lots of different terms that can work for it so if you're hung up on the term you can use a different term um you just want to have a clear definition of what it means to you but i guess if i had to kind of like summarize what the akashic records are to me now um it's like the ultimate spiritual google search uh, for anything that you could ever want to um, understand about yourself or about the world around you. And I'm a sucker for learning about how things work um, and function. And one of my specialties is actually looking at like the origin of concepts, like the origin of light language, for example, or um, this, I work in soul mechanism uh, structure it's a different lens of viewing the structure of an energy body versus like the chakra system or meridians or something like that and then at the same that an expanded lens the universal mechanism structure and how it all works together um like a giant russian doll expanding out and all interconnecting and working together between planets and realms and all that good stuff um but yeah so i got off killed her but yeah so whatever you're excited and inspired to learn about, you can find that knowledge within the Akashic Records. But with the caveat that the frequency and the energy can best be described as that of compassionate, neutral truth. So that means they're always going to give you the truth in as neutral of a lens as possible, which means sometimes it's outside of like human or earth centered concepts um or outside of it's 
sometimes our morals can be corrupted by capitalism, patriarchy, racism, hierarchical means and things like that. And so they're, you know, they're, they function for all of these different realms and planets and of different types of beings where they can go and access their Akashic records too. It's not just for humans on earth um, or not just humans. It's animals technically have Akashic records and everything. So they kind of exist outside of all these different cultural concepts of ethics and morality. They have their own neutral um, concept of that but it is rooted in compassion, which means that there's been times where like I've asked a question and they've told me no, or told me that I'm not ready for the answer because they knew that I genuinely was not prepared to understand the true answer. Um, and so they won't give you an answer that you're not ready for. Um, that you won't be have the capability to process and understand and put into um, application and use because everything that they give you um, from the first spark of connection as it expands and grows is centered through the lens of what will help you become the most embodied, authentic, aligned, radiant expression of yourself what is really truly going to help you be you um and what that means to you at that time and everything and how that grows and so they're not they're they're not really going to give you useless information not that any information is really truly useless in my opinion but um they're always going to give it to you through the lens of how you need to understand it for your unique perspective which i think is really important to understand when engaging with it um because i feel like sometimes people get frustrated when they first start off like oh i i want to wanting to receive like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of information where like i said it's kind of like learning a new language and so you don't start learning a language and suddenly understand paragraphs of complex information it might start off as genuinely a symbol or a phrase that builds on um, itself over time and gets more complex as you're ready and more capable to understand it um so yeah, I highly, highly recommend working with the Akashic Records, um, even if you're super critical of the concept, if you're skeptical, um, it doesn't hurt to like check it out. Um, I'm all for challenging my beliefs. Um, I would not be here if I wasn't, because this is not at all <laughs> what I expected to um, be doing with my life. Um, like I said, I was on a whole different path to becoming like a clinical therapist. And then I got massively redirected and I'm so grateful for that. But um, but yeah, um, everyone has soul records. Everyone has innate access to their records because they're your records. Uh, now having access to like a planet record or someone else's, that's a different thing. But uh, access to your records is innate just because you exist. And everyone has a record keeper assigned to their spirit team um, that is meant to help you begin that process of translating and connecting with um, your records and your knowledge. Um, it's just about finding them and learning that connection and learning that new language. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll leave some links below. Um, I do have like a little Akashic Records 101 blog post that gives you like the super basics um, and then I will drop some links um, where I talk about it in mentorship sessions and classes and all that good stuff. If you do want to learn from that type of um, avenue, uh, which is really can be really helpful. Um, I'm all about empowering your unique perspective and lens. But uh, yeah, uh, just in general, if there's anything that you'd like for me to talk about, about my experiences with the Akashic Records, looking at certain 
um, topics or ideas through the lens of what the Akashic Records have to say about it, um, drop a comment down below. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. Um, do you believe in the Akashic Records? Do you think it's a bunch of baloney? Um, how do you feel? Are you curious? Um, what kind of things would you like to learn about from the lens of the Akashic Records? Um, and I'd love to make some more videos about it. But yeah, I hope that was interesting. I um, hope it inspired some curiosity for you. Uh, have a great day. Bye.